All right, so um, hello, this is Alex from School for Tomorrow, and I am your math teacher. Uh, and you are now watching this. And some of you have, we've started this before with some of you. Um, some of you we've started this a little bit. Some of you have done some, some a lot. Um, anyway, regardless of what class you're in, whether you are in pre-algebra, algebra one, algebra two, or it is yet to be determined, um, we are all going to start with this because this is a review for. Um, everyone and even if you know how to do it um, I still want you to watch this and make sure that we're all on the same page um, so in the de video description there is a link and then the link will let you download this uh, just you, what you'll see it'll be 18 pages um, there is section 1.1 that reviews order of operations there is section 1.2 which reviews fractions there is section 1.3, which reviews operations on fractions. Um, section 1.4, sign numbers, positives and negatives. Um, and then there's stuff for you to try to show that you can do it. Now, if you can do it, and that's great. I still am going to want you to, and I'm going to want you to show your work. Um, and then mainly the applications. That's where you really find out do you actually know how to do this um, at the level that I will I'm gonna want you to um, and if so then great and if not then we just need to spend some time on this um, and this first lesson will sort of help me find out um, what you best need uh, in terms of any holes you might have from uh, your prior math classes or your, just your prior math history um, and so on and so forth. Anyway, um, let's get started going through this. Um, I am not, I would like to see this this uh, eventually kind of filled out. Um, if the examples, this is for, this is note taking. If you want to just watch me do all the examples, and not do any of them on paper, um, ultimately that's gonna be up to you. Um, you are gonna decide how you best take notes. Uh, for some people like to take notes and that's helpful for them because writing things down helps you remember them. So for example, I would yes. do these examples, um, but don't do them just to fill them out because um, I am not going to, at this point, um, grade positively or negatively whether or not any of the examples are filled out. Um, I do want you to do where it says eventually practice problems. Um, this is stuff that yes I do want you to do and I do want you to show your work and I'll talk about what all of that means. Um, this use your graphing calculator to check your answer that's not necessarily true. Um, but anyway um, point being, I'm going to go through these first few sections, and you can just watch. You can take notes on this uh, printed out, or you can take notes on a sheet of paper, um, or however you want to take notes. We'll have to, you know, um, and if you don't know how you want to take notes, we will figure out, we'll talk about it. What is the best way for you to take notes to learn well? That's a really important thing to learn. All right, I'm going to stop talking about. Um, all that now and I'm going to get into the lesson and make this as quick as possible but it probably won't be that quick because it's the first time and I'm gonna want your feedback on what you like and don't like about this video okay on with the math um, section 1.1 is on orders of operations and this acronym PEMDAS I'll slow down a bit and read it if we are working with a mathematical expression that contains more than one operation uh, then we need to understand how to simplify. The acronym PEMDAS stands for parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. It's a mnemonic, which is a way of remembering something in one word or easily. And it, it is useful to um, write this down to help you remember what to do first. Uh, eventually, you will not need the acronym. You'll just understand the rules. Um, there are other systems different from PEMDAS and those are kind of neat. Uh, if you're curious, you could look up one called reverse Polish notation, um, which some calculators can use. 
Uh, but anyway, uh, PEMDAS is the standard for written work. But there are other standards. You might think that's interesting. So, um, the review of this is important so we're all on the same page with how this works. And actually, I'm going to um, do a mark on, on different ways of doing things. Okay, so I'm going to copy this example and we're going to go through these orders of operations. I'm going to do this by opening sketchbook and then I have a pen, tablet, and I'm going to write on here. So um, I'm going to start with blue. Example one um, has, first of all, two problems that look very similar. And I want to talk about how we would read this. And at any point, if, if you see something, first of all, that you're not sure what it means, um, if you're not sure what something means in math, then it's impossible to do. So don't stretch yourself trying to do something that's impossible for you to do. Because uh, if you don't know what that dot means, for example, I mean, you could make a guess at what it is, but you know, um, either look it up or wait to ask me or um, don't try to just, don't just stare at it and feel bad about yourself because that's, that's just not helpful. All right. so. Um, We've got this first thing here, and what is this? This is, I could read this as, as two times, the dot means times, two times five squared. Uh, although really what I would say properly is this is the quantity two times five squared. And quantity means is implying that this is in parentheses. The two times five are in parentheses. Comparatively, this other um, example in red, I would just read as two times five squared. Okay. Uh, so let's do each one and we'll see what's different. So in simplification, first we do, again, the, the acronym is PEMDAS. So first we're going to do operations in parentheses. Uh, in the parentheses, there's a 2 times a 5, and I can simplify that. 2 times 5, I know how to um, evaluate that. 2 times 5 is 10. And then squared. Now I haven't even thought about what 10 squared is yet. The first step I do is I simplify what's in the parentheses. Um, actually, I'm going to do that in blue. Again, I'm not even thinking about anything except the parentheses. Don't, uh, I'm going to encourage you not to try to skip to the final answer, which will be 100. But it's going to be helpful to write this first. Um, because when it gets more complicated, it's going to make things much easier to take that extra step. Um, the other one, well, there's no parentheses, nothing to simplify. So then what is the first operation I do? Is it 2 times 5 or is it the 5 squared? Well, PEMDAS would indicate that, well, first parentheses, I don't see any parentheses here. Next, uh, the E exponent, I do see an exponent, so I do the exponent first. So this becomes 2 times 5 squared, which is 25. And um, now there's no more exponents, there's no parentheses, uh, I do the multiplication. So now I can do 2 times 25, which is 50. So the answer to this one is 50. Uh, the answer to this problem is 100. Um, OK, we've got two more examples. Um, first of all, this for in this one here, I will use orange, or light and yellow, as it's called. Um, PEMDAS, do I see any parentheses? Nope. Do I see any exponents? Nope. Do I see any multiplication? Nope. Um, then I go to addition, and when I see addition or multiple or subtraction, uh, I go left to right. So first, ten minus the seven, that's going to become a uh, three, and the one comes down, so that's four. Uh, this other example, I'll circle in green, um, PEMDAS. First, do I see anything in parentheses? Yes, I do. That means I'm going to 
simplify this first. And I'm, I'm not just going to ignore that 10 and that minus. All I'm thinking about is the thing in parentheses to make this as easy on my brain as possible. Um, so the 7 plus 1 is an 8. The 10 minus comes down. And I have 10 minus 8. And 10 minus 8, that is 2. Um, some of these I can now verify if you want to. There's a program we're going to be using a bit. Um, let me go to back to the document, which is here. And I'm going to, for example, copy this. Um, I'm going to be using this program called Mathematica quite a bit. And I'm going to try to get everyone a, a some sort of license of it. Um, I'm going to ask that what this is, 10 minus 7 plus 1. It's telling me it's 80 negative. That means something funny happened. Because I think we'll both agree that that doesn't make sense, I think. Uh, that's a, maybe it was a dash, not a, yeah, that should be two. I think what happened here is maybe, that's, yeah, there we go. Um, again, that's the kind of thing that can happen in, uh, that can cause misunderstanding is, I'm kind of arguing with the computer over what that original symbol was, and it doesn't think that's a minus sign, but it looks like a minus sign to me. But apparently it wasn't, so I changed it to a minus sign, and then it works. A place you can go to do the same thing in the meantime to check your work is wolframalpha.com. And you can paste in any problem and it will do the proper orders of operation, even if you make it incredibly complicated. So I'm going to type it in exactly as I see it and it's going to give me the result too. It's also going to tell me what it is. It's going to put it on a number line for me. It's going to illustrate that I have 10 boxes. If I take away eight boxes, I'm left with two boxes. Um, and I really like this illustration. Um, I think we will be doing some things like that. OK, back to the document. OK, um, example two. We're now seeing things that are a little more complicated. So example two, um, well, first of all, uh, I don't like seeing that symbol. I don't like that symbol. I'm going to rewrite this with, well, my first instinct is to rewrite it with uh, in this notation. So instead it would be 24. That's a little hard to see. I'm going to change colors to black, um, 24. And instead of seeing this the division symbol, I like to use see it as a fraction because you're really not ever going to see this symbol much uh, when we get to more advanced math. Um, but we should know what it means and in the case of this example and just going through workers of operation it really doesn't matter what form it in, is in. Um, let's just go through it. So I'm going to cross that out. Um, all right, so again, PEMDAS, first we look for parentheses. Do we see parentheses? Yes, we see parentheses. That means we do what's in here and don't think about anything else until we've done that. Four minus two, that becomes two. Okay, um, then I'm gonna, everything else, I'm going to bring down. There's the 24 and there's an exponent here. Um, okay, I'm thinking PEMDAS again. Are there any parentheses? Yes, but there's nothing to simplify in the parentheses. Um, next is in PEMDAS is E. Are there any exponents? Yes, there is. There's an exponent. Okay. Um, I'm going to do this uh, a way that maybe is a little longer than you would, some of you would like, but for the sake of you um, who need some review on what exponents mean. So um, an exponent means we are multiplying this number with itself three times. So it becomes 2 times 2 times 2. And I'm going to annotate that a little bit in red, in blue. Um, so see that number is a three. That means that there. Are, that's why there's one, two, three of these things. Um, and this is a good way if you were confused with exponents, uh, write them all out. And oftentimes that's really helpful. It will be very helpful with problems that are very complicated using with have a lot of exponents and a lot of variables. So um, I'm going to 
do this. Again, this was an unnecessary step, but it could be a very important step for you if you're confused by this. So there's no you know, right number of steps necessarily. Um, so at this, from this, this stage, what can I do next? Again, PEMDAS says parentheses. Okay, I see parentheses, but there, I can't simplify any of the twos. Then I want an exponents. There's no exponents. Um, then the m multiplication, I do multiplication next. So my multiplication here is two times two times two. I can only do one thing at a time, so I'm only gonna do one thing at a time. This two times two is four. And this two comes down. And then I've got 24 divided by four times two. Four times two is a multiplication, I can do that. First I'm gonna bring down the 24 divided by, and four times two is eight. Okay, so now do I um, have any parentheses? No, I could drop parentheses, but I have no reason to. Anyway, it's simplified. Um, I have no exponents. I've got no multiplication. I have uh, division next. So now I have 24 divided by eight, and uh, I can do that one in my head because eight does go into 24 quite nicely. Um, it becomes three. Circle it. That's my answer. Okay, next problem. Both of these. Okay, uh, example three. Um, a little more complicated, but again, if we follow the rules of PEMDAS, this shouldn't take any actual thought. Uh, I mean, like, we shouldn't be thinking hard about this. We just follow the steps and do these really simple operations. And if we follow the rules, this um, shouldn't be hard at all. Either you do it right or you don't do it right. And don't feel good or bad either way. Um, it's just we have to agree on the rules. Um, it can sometimes be helpful to put this in, say, Mathematica or in from Alpha just to see what number you're going to get out with it. So I'm going to check. Um, and I'm just checking because at the end I'm going to want to make sure that I follow the rules that we're trying all to agree on uh, the right way. So um, let's get started. So PEMDAS. First I'm doing parentheses. Now uh, in the parentheses I have actually quite a bit of stuff. So I'm actually going to over here write down the 1 plus 12 divided by 6. And I have to do PEMDAS on this um, because there are different things here. There's an addition sign and there's a division sign. And which do I do first, the addition or the division? Well, that's what PEMDAS is for. Uh, so P E M D A S. Um, so which comes first, addition or division? Well, there's, there's parentheses, exponents, multiplications. Uh, division comes first. So that means I do 12 divided by six before I do one plus 12. And that makes a huge difference. Um, and it's an easy mistake to make. So that's why it's nice to write down PEMDAS. Do it if you need to. If you don't need to, then you don't have to. But for a while you might need to, and that's fine. So first I do the 12 divided by six. 12 divided by six. Well, six goes into 12 twice, that's a two. One comes down, so that becomes one plus two. One plus two, uh, well, there is only one operation there. The addition, one plus two is three. I'm not going to go back and I'm going to write in, rewrite this, having done the operation within the parentheses. Four plus five in parentheses, the three it came from here, um, squared. Now I do PEMDAS again, every time I'm doing PEMDAS. <laughs> So do I see any parentheses? Yes, but it's already simplified. Nothing to do in there. So I can go on to looking for exponents. Are there any, any exponents? Yes, there is an exponent right here. So I, I, I take care of that exponent next. I do three squared. So this becomes four plus five. And the three squared, that becomes a nine. Um, note that that squared does not affect the five. It only affects what it's directly over, um, which was the parentheses. So these things are, are separate. That's why I put this in parentheses, um, the, the nine. Um, 
I could have just as well written instead 4 plus 5 times 9 that's the same thing um, I like parentheses a lot because to me it makes it clear and it's much less confusing so I like parentheses if you want to do it this way it's also perfectly fine but um, there's no one way is not better than the other um, if you ask me do it this way but they're equivalent so neither one is more right okay um, getting back on track we have 4 plus 5 times 9 uh, do I do the 4 plus 5 first or do the 5 times the 9 first? Again, I use PEMDAS and PEMDAS tells me to do multiplication first. So I do the 5 times the 9 and I've memorized my times tables. I don't have to think about what multiplication is. I just know that 5 times 9 is 45. That's really just, uh, I've memorized that. So I don't have to think about it. Um, and then I have 4 plus 45 and PEMDAS again. You might say, why are you even doing PEMDAS? Well, just to get in the habit of every time I write something new down, I still want to follow orders of operation to make sure, and I'm, I'm doing it somewhat excessively just to get the point across. So um, I only have one operation here, so it doesn't matter what order I do it in. Um, 4 plus 45, that is 49. Okay, and that is my final answer for example three. Um, to evaluate it. Uh, I'm going to check my work now by copying this in, paste it into Mathematica, and see if it agrees with me. It says 34, but notice uh, it's not in the format I wanted. It, it, it didn't. Whoops. Whoops. Um, Oh, that's right. It's good. Um, I want to make sure it looks like what I want it to look like. 4 plus 5 times quantity, 1 plus 12 divided by 6 squared. Evaluate that, yes, 49. So I did it right. But again, even with the computer, I have to put it in the right way or it'll give me not the wrong thing, just not what I expected. So, um, back to example. We're working. There we are. Uh, example four. Um, here we see this again. We're not, we're not seeing the division symbol anymore. We're seeing it as a fraction, which makes me happy. So I'm going to draw a little smiley face because I'm happy. I like fractions. Um, and okay, so let's look at this. Uh, we're going to do PEMDAS. And um, if it helps, uh, this actually has kind of parentheses in it. Um, the top and the bottom are kind of, they're, they're sort of protected. Uh, this is the equivalent to 15 minus 3 in parentheses divided by, in parentheses, 1 plus 5. And if you didn't know that, then you might make a mistake here. Um, so I'm just telling you that, that this statement is equivalent to this statement. Um, when I look at this, what I really see is 15 minus 3, and I, I kind of imagine the parentheses, because if I don't imagine parentheses, then PEMDAS won't work. So either draw the parentheses around them and then use PEMDAS, um, or know that these are protected, um, because if you don't draw the parentheses or know that these are like protected things, the numerator and the denominator, uh, then PEMDAS is not going to work. So that's why this is kind of tricky, a tricky problem because we have to talk about that. So um, PEMDAS says do things in parentheses first or do things in the numerator and the denominator first. So all that means is um, 15 minus 3, I can do that. Now do I do the 15 minus 3 first or do I do the 1 plus 5 first? It really doesn't matter. They're, they have equal priority. Um, and they don't affect each other yet. So I'm going to do this one first because it's the first one I'm looking at. 15 minus 3, uh, that is 12. And on the bottom, 1 plus 5, that's 6. Okay, 
and now I'm going to do PEMDAS again. Um, I see no, I see parentheses because I drew them, but there's nothing to do in them, so there's nothing to do. Uh, any exponents? No. Any multiplication? No. Any division? Yes, there is division. 12 divided by 6. 12 divided by 6 is 2. That's my final answer. Okay, moving on. Scrolling up. Number four. Okay, there's an you try. Um, I'm not going to do that. You can try. And then you can plug them into something and get the answer out. Um, if you're curious, I will show you again in more from Alpha. A good site. Um, again, I, I copied and pasted it in, but uh, again, the copy and pasting didn't perfectly work. If I want to type in um, squared in something like this, where I can't really put in an exponent, I use this symbol, which is called a caret. And it is found by pressing, uh, holding shift and pressing six on the keyboard. Or um, there are other ways to do it, but that's fine. I'll hit equals. So it comes out to 86. And if you're trying it, just make sure you show your work and that makes sense. Um, again, I'm not concerned that you. I'm more concerned in seeing the work to see your, that you're doing the process properly than I am in seeing just the number 86. Because if you just put 86, I don't know how you got there. Okay, um, section 1.2, fractions. All right, what, is, what are we talking about here? Uh, converting a mixed number to an improper fraction. It gives us some steps here um, to multiply the denominator and the whole number to add the numerator, to recite, re write the result over the denominator. I am not going to go through those steps. Um, I don't think. Actually, let me think about it for a moment. Okay, um, section 1.2 fractions. So uh, I'm just going to kind of do these. And because this is a, a, the kind of thing, this, this section is not as important to do for um, pre-algebra, algebra, and algebra 2. Um, so I'm going to do them. And then based on what we talk about on Tuesday, uh, we'll decide whether we need to do kind of a lesson on this. Because um, some fractions can be a little tricky. They shouldn't be, but they can be. Okay, so it says express as an improper fraction. Now, improper fraction, you need to know the definition of that or this problem is impossible. So, if you don't know what an improper fraction is, um, don't stress out. You either look it up online, you ask your teacher, or you wait for me to tell you in this video, and I'm about to tell you what, in this video what an improper fraction is. An improper fraction is a fraction where Okay, so in a fraction we have the numerator, and maybe you don't like the handwriting. I'm going to do this in Mathematica. Um, it is where we have the numerator. I don't want that font. I want. How about? How about this? It is where the numerator. That's the number on top, um, and the denominator, the demon, dem, denominator. Uh, is on the bottom. I hope that's okay. Let me make this a little bigger. Mm -hmm. One second while I zoom. Oh, that's nice. Uh, so the numerator, that's the number on top, and the denominator, that's the number on the bottom. Uh, if it's an improper fraction, that is a one, so improper. Now that's too big. An improper fraction is one where the numerator is larger than the denominator. So we have either a big number um, over a small number. An example of that would be, say, 100 
over 5. That's called improper. Uh, a proper fraction, you might guess, is where we have a small number divided by a big number. Um, for example, 5 divided by 100. That would be a proper fraction. Um, and there's nothing really improper. It's not like they're, 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 they're wrong. It's just oftentimes if we see a fraction like this, um, you might be asked to not write an improper fraction. You might be asked to put a whole number in front of it. For example, if I had 100 over 5, Um, well, that's 20, so that's, but what if it was, say, 101 over 5? Um, that could be written as, see, Mathematica will do improper fractions. I could do it as a decimal of 20.2, or in a fraction that would be 20 over here, um, so mixed mixed number uh, 100 that would be 20 and one fifth that's two tenths or to simplify that fraction that's 20 and one fifths so um, yeah improper fraction there's nothing wrong with it it's just that's you should know what it is um, and oftentimes you might be asked to simplify these to a mixed number which is a whole number and then a, a proper fraction um, I really don't care. Um, as long as it's the right, the right thing, it doesn't matter so much to me. But um, it is good to know what these things are. So uh, I want to express these as an improper fraction, and this is actually kind of a, a good exercise. So um, I have three and two sevenths, and I want to write that without the whole number here. So what I really want to do is is say, well, how do I represent? three uh, in terms of sevenths. How many sevenths are there in three? And this is a good test of, of, of whether you really understand fractions or not. So I'm going to draw a little diagram. I'm going to draw a box. So imagine I have, I'm going to draw three boxes. And these boxes should all represent uh, a unit. So I'm going to count them. I've got one of these boxes. I've got two of these boxes. Each of these represents one. And if I add them all up, I'd have three. And then I also have um, another box. And I'm going to cut it into seven pieces. Uh, so that means I'm going to draw six lines in it. One, two, oops, three, four, five, six. And uh, I didn't do it perfectly, but there should be seven pieces in here. So this represents one seventh. This one here represents one seventh. This little of the box here represents the seventh. This part of the box represents the seventh. This part of the box represents the seventh. This part of the box represents the seventh. And this part of the box represents the seventh. So that if we add them all up, we would have seven sevenths, and that would be one. I'm not going to kind of uh, fill in. Do I have a paint bucket tool? Whoops, that was too much paint bucket. All right. So I'll use um, a spray paint or something. I'm talking about the uh, features I have here on my tablet. Um, there we go. Okay, so in blue, if I have three and two sevenths, why well, I'm gonna count that area, that's one, now I've got two, now I've got three, and then how many of these one sevenths do I wanna include? And I only want to, I want to include two of them because this, this is two sevenths. So I've got those two, and now I've represented in geometrically three and two sevenths. But what if I want to represent 
all of this um, as a improper fraction. Well, that means instead of each of these boxes being one and one and one, I want to think of them each as being, and going back to my red, as being a one, two, three, Six as being a collection of one sevenths. So each of these boxes, instead of being one, will be seven sevenths. In this box, instead of a one, it will be seven sevenths. In this box, I will be going seven sevenths. And if I'm going. I'm kind of doing this quickly. Um, so if if I'm going too fast, don't worry about it. Just ask me about it on Tuesday. We'll go over it in more detail. So that means. Um, Instead of talking about this as one, I'm, I'm going to think of this as seven sevenths. So let me erase the numbers here. That's not a one. That's not a one. That's not a one. That is that is seven sevenths. This here is seven sevenths. This here is seven sevenths. And this here is a seventh, another seventh. So this just one here is two sevenths. So how many sevenths do I have in total? Well, I've got seven here, and seven here, and seven here, and two here. So how many sevens in total is that? Well, that's seven plus seven plus seven plus two. So seven plus seven plus seven plus two. Um, and they're all sevenths, we're divided by seven. Now my orders of operation, well, I have seven plus seven plus seven, that's 21. 21 plus 2, that's 23. So this is 23 sevenths. That's our final answer. Um, if you follow the instructions above this example, it did tell you to give you an easy algorithm to do that, but I don't want you to use that algorithm if you don't understand why it works. So really I want you to do it this way until you understand what, why this way works, and then Eventually you could say, well, I understand that if I multiply seven by three, well, that would be seven times three, that's 21. And then I have the seven times, the two is still up there and the seven stays on the bottom and then I get the same answer and that was much faster. But uh, if you don't understand why you multiply that three and that seven, then this is kind of a waste of time because the whole purpose of math is to learn why things work, not to get the answer. Okay, um, I am going to do it the fast way. For example, this other problem here. And if you hear a dog barking in the background, her name is Danny, and she's my puppy. Okay, so here I've got um, one third, but also twelve. So I could draw a bunch of boxes here. Um, I'm not going to do all of them, but each of these boxes. In total, I would have 12, and uh, why not? But I'm going to copy and paste. Oh, I don't use that. I can just use Command Control Shift 4 on a Mac. 1, 2, 3, 4. And here's some more boxes. And here's some more boxes. And here's some more boxes. How many boxes do I have now? I've got 3, 6, 9, 12. Um, I have 12 boxes, and then I have one more box. Control shift four. I just want one more box. Uh, right here. And um, each of these is full, but this one we only have one third of. So I'm going to maybe erase part of that because we only have a third. And I'll draw a little line here. So we can agree that each of these represents one. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and a little bit more, a third more. But if we think of each of these boxes not as one, but as three thirds, which is equivalent to one, um, and this one is one third, well then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have twelve boxes. So imagine we're zooming in on one box. Each of these boxes is three-thirds. So we're going to add 
up all these boxes, but counting by threes. So we have three thirds, six thirds, nine thirds, and I'm gonna stop saying thirds and just count up by threes. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 25, 28, 31, 33, 36, and one more, 37 thirds. Um, and that, that's, that's right. And I could do the same thing the fast way by saying, well, I already understand this. So I'm going to do, I know I have 12 boxes or 12 units, but I want to represent each of them as a third, um, in terms of thirds. So I would do 12 times three, 12 times three is 36. So this 12 would be term become, not really become as equivalent to 36 thirds. And then I have a third after it. So if I have 36 thirds and add a third to that, I would have 37 thirds. Either way, I get the same answer. Um, oh, and maybe, I, maybe if this is not something that was clear, I should state it explicitly, that if I have a number, say 12 and one third, that means 12 plus one third. It's just the, the plus is for whatever reason, uh, not conventionally written. But you can always expand it and write it this way. It just takes longer to write, so it's typically not done. But um, if it's helpful to think about it, you can always rewrite 12 and a third or two and two, three and two sevens by putting a plus in between the whole number and the fraction. Okay, um, next example. All right, and these, um, it's saying to write these, these are our improper fractions and it wants me to write them as a mixed number. So um, I'm gonna do this in kind of a similar way. I've got boxes and we're talking, we're, we're kind of the language we're in right now is in fifths. So this, if this box, I'm gonna draw two boxes to start with and then hopefully you'll understand why. Um, so this box is five fifths because it's representing a, the idea of one. This box is also five fifths. So if I have both these boxes up right now, I would be at 10 fifths, which is equivalent to two. Um, if I added another box of five fifths, well then I would have one, two, three. I would have, I would have 15 fifths, but that would be equivalent to three. If I added another box and called it five fifths, well, that would be equivalent to four. I now have four boxes. Each one is one um, or five this. And I'm gonna keep doing this until um, I get to 42, because I wanna represent 42 in terms of fifths. So right now I've got five fifths, 10 fifths. If I count all these 15 fifths, 20 fifths, um, I'm gonna do copy and paste. Speed up this process a little bit. Move this right. Move this right here. All right. And okay. Right now, let's let's so let's uh, erase this stuff, and then we'll talk about what I have written down. So um, right now, how many fifths do I have? I have five fifths, ten fifths, fifteen fifths. So. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So this represents 40 fifths, which also you could represent as eight. And you might know that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squares. That's why uh, this method works. Um, but there's also a little bit more. There's, there's this little box here that represents two fifths because if, I'm, if I wanna count up to this number 42 by fives, um, well, I can't do it by fives. I go five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and then I need two more. So I need to add this in. 
Uh, and the same thing happens down here. So I've, I've got my 40 fifths, which is eight, but then I have to have a little bit more, and that little bit more is two fifths. So that's the answer, eight and two fifths. Um, can I simplify this at all? No, I can't. I can't because five is a prime number. Um, I'm going to do the, uh, now this 53 ninths, but I'm going to do it um, a little less explicitly. Um, so the fast way to do this is to know, well, how many times would nine go into 53 uh, until we, we kind of spill over and, and have, suddenly have too many nines where we have a number larger than 53. So I'm going to uh, count by nines. Nine, 18, uh, 27, 36. 45, 54. Oh, we've gone too far. Again, I, I wanted to find a number that was less than 53. So uh, 45 is, is where we're going to be at. So 45 ninths. I'm going to write the original fraction here. 53 ninths is equivalent to 45 ninths plus, well, if I have 45 ninths, how much more would I need to add to this to get to 53 ninths? Um, I would have to add eight more ninths because 45 um, plus eight is 53, and this is how fractions add, and if this is confusing, then let me know on Tuesday because then we'll just spend some time talking about how to add fractions. So um, one of these numbers I can simplify and one I can't. 45 ninths, well, that's eight. Right? No, it's not eight. It's one, one, two, three, four, five. It's five. So we've got five, and then we have eight ninths more. But typically we don't write the plus sign, so this is five and eight ninths. And we can't simplify that anymore. Um, that's the way to do it. Uh, you don't have to, of course, count these out. You could do, um, you know, nine. Well, in some ways you do have to do this because if, if you, you wanna find basically a multiple of nine that doesn't go over and I am trying to avoid using words such as modulus and remainder right now. Um, if this makes sense, then you're good. Um, yeah, I'm gonna move on. And then again, we'll talk about if this was okay or not. Who won fractions? I've basically, we've already done that. Because um, I, I kind of went overboard and explained the previous problems, so I'm not going to do those. I've already covered that I, those ideas here. This is nice and simple. This is just definitions. Um, let me just go back and make sure I am doing what I say I'm going to be doing. Um, oh, one and zero. So, this is just going to be kind of self-evident. One fourth is equivalent to one fourth. Four over one that is equivalent to four. And due to you know um, just the, the what it means to be equal to something that means that if I have a four, I could also rewrite that as four over one. And sometimes that will be a useful thing to do. If I have any number divided by itself, that is equivalent to one. It doesn't matter what that number is. It actually doesn't even matter what that thing is. It doesn't even have to be a number. For example, let me find a, uh, I'm gonna copy this little picture. If I have a symbol for um, the Safari browser and a symbol for the Safari browser and you're dividing those two things, that is also gonna be equivalent to one. And you might say, Ms., uh, or Alex or Mr. Reiner, that's really silly. How can you divide that, that symbol? What does that even mean? I don't have to know what it means, but I'm going to tell you as a rule, anything divided by itself, even if you have no idea what it means to divide that thing, if you divide it by itself, it's going to equal one. That's just a super important rule. And this concept, this idea that anything divided by itself, this one is going to be really, really important that you... Um, 
maybe not understand it yet, but that you recognize it. That anything divided by itself, no matter what it is, it doesn't have to be a number, is one. All right, zero divided by four, um, well, that's zero. And zero is divided by anything is zero, except zero divided by zero, um, which is zero-ish, but it's really undefined. Uh, you can't do it. Don't ever divide by zero. Um, unless you're in calculus and then we can talk about limits, but I don't think anyone is in that, in that position. If you're in pre-calculus, uh, then we will start to talk about it. So uh, four divided by zero, this is uh, undefined. Um, John might say it's a really big number. Um, it's kind of like infinity, but it's not really infinity. Um, it's undefined, you don't do it, it has no definition. So really, don't think of it as infinity. Think of it as error, brain error. I just can't do that, error. Can't divide by zero. You just can't do it. Don't do it, don't divide by zero. Against the law. It's against the rules of nature. All right, um, back here. Again, that's you try. Operations on fractions. Um, I'm just going to do. Let's see. I'm just going to do one of these um, because either because because it takes a long time to go through. We're also just going to do one, and then I want your feedback on Tuesday about whether this is doable or not. All right, so I want to evaluate this. Again, I'm not really solving for anything. I'm just putting in numbers and checking. Um, so I've got a half plus three halves plus two fifths. And first I want to do my orders of operations. So I think of PEMDAS if I'm at that point where I, where if you, if you need to. Um, so because of PEMDAS, I know multiplication comes first. So the first thing I have to do is multiply three halves times two fifths. Now, I can't do that because um, they've got different denominators. And, well, no, never mind. That's for addition. Um, multiplication of fractions is easy. It's super easy. We just multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom. So, 3 halves times, I'm going to use dots for multiplication always. I do not write x's unless I mean the variable um, or if I mean cross product. But we will not be doing cross product, so uh, you can ignore that, what I just said. Times 2 fifths. Uh, well, the 3 times the 2, multiply straight across the top, that is 6. And the 2 times the 5, that is 10. So uh, this thing here becomes 6 tenths. So then our problem is we're going to bring this 1 half down, 1 half plus 6 tenths. Um, and I can't add these because they've got different denominators. Uh, now there are some tricks you can use to multiplying, um, to adding fractions to get like denominators, uh, like cross multiplication. And I can teach you that as a as an algorithm. And I will define the word algorithm probably in class. It just means a, a series of steps um, to get the answer. But uh, it's much better to, to take a moment and think about this. Um, that one half means that 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 means one half of a a unit a unit we refer, refer to as one. This is six tenths of a unit or something we can refer to as one. Um, and I need them to be in the same language here. And kind of a, if we're talking in the world of halves, um, that's hard to communicate with the world of tenths. So I need them to both be speaking the same language. The easiest way to do that for this problem this takes a little intuition is I'm going to rewrite this as, not as a half, but as 5 tenths. And I think you'll agree that 1 half and 5 tenths is the same thing. It's, it's half of something. Um, and then I'm going to bring over the 6 tenths. And now I can add these because if I have 5 tenths and I have 6 tenths, well, those are, we're speaking the same language here. Um, so I can now add if I have 5 tenths and I have 6 more tenths. And let me illustrate this. So um, I'm going to draw a little box and try these straight lines. 
and now I'm going to copy and paste that a bunch. I'm going to say that this little box, oh, first I'm going to write in it, that this represent, represents one tenth. I don't know if you can read that. Maybe I'll make it bigger. I'll make it bigger. Here's a box, and it represents one tenth. Okay, um, and I'm going to copy and paste it a bunch. Let me erase that. So I've got another tenth. Actually, I'm going to be a little bit more careful here. All right, so here is another tenth, and here is another tenth. So there's three tenths, there's four tenths, there's five tenths, and now I'm gonna copy this whole thing just to save some time. Tidying up here with my workspace. Okay, so um, how many tenths do I have here? I don't know if I made too many or too little yet. Well, uh, I know every ten will be equivalent to one, but I have so one, two, three, four, five. Well, this here, I hope you agree, represents five tenths which is equivalent to this fraction here, 5 tenths. And then over here, I want um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I need one more, don't I? Because I want to represent 6 tenths, because I have a fraction called 6 tenths that I want to add to my 5 tenths. All right. Oops, there we go. So, um, here, I'm going to change my color. Here, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six tenths. Here, this represents six tenths. And now, um, so what is that going to be equal to? Well, rules of addition of uh, would say I add the two numbers and I would I'll have 11 tenths. And I you will hope you will agree that you know, um. I can count these up, um, but only because they're the same type of thing. Um, so I have one of these two, three, four, five, and then I'm adding on six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven tenths. Uh, another insight you could have is I'm going to use the spray paint thing. Is that I'm going to shade in what what is equivalent to one, and that is ten tenths. Ten tenths is equivalent to one. So what I really have is I have one, and then I have another tenth on the side. So the ideal answer to this question, 11 tenths, again, that's an improper fraction. Typically, we want to avoid that. Um, eventually, it's not really going to matter too much, but we should, I guess, rewrite write this as a one, and we have an additional tenth left over, or extra. And one and a tenth, we typically don't write the plus, so we would write one and a tenth, and that would be the proper um, thing to do here. So that's the answer, and we've gone through all the steps. Perhaps more more steps than you want to do, but it's important again that you are able to under explain and you understand the work you do, or else, what's the point? Um, the point is not to to put the right thing on the page to get a mark, because that's not how the class is going to work. The point is to understand things so we can then use our understanding to do interesting, fun things. All right, there's some new tries, some new tries. Sign numbers. You know, I think, I think that's enough, unless do I really have to? Um, yeah, we can do this. Because it is, it is, it is kind of essential for the practice problems. Um, so I'm gonna go back to my sketchbook. 
So the number line. We'll be talking about the number line quite a bit, regardless of what class you're in, because it's more complicated than you probably realize. Um, the idea is we have an imaginary null line, and we can put numbers on it. And right here I'm putting integers, and they are all real numbers. And here we've got negative 1, negative 2, and it goes off to infinity in all directions. Um, and First, it's just a good idea to know that the number line exists, and this is how we define it. We can we can put a zero somewhere, and then we can say each tick is in this direction, and then negatives are the opposite direction. So you can think of adding numbers, or it, as increased numbers, as going to the right, and negatives as going to the left. And uh, I think that way a lot. Um, and as you develop your your math skills, you might start thinking of positive numbers feel like kind of right and negative numbers feel left, and that's fine if you think that way, but you don't have to. Okay, um, so look at this, let's look at this example. Absolute value of number is the distance that number is from zero on the number line. So let's take a look at negative three. Um, and let's look at our number line to talk about it. So how far is negative 3 from 0? 1, 2, 3. This line is 3. Notice that if I, if I wanted to find the absolute value of 3 here, so anyway, I'll put my, my answer 3. Um, I'm going to change colors to how about light and yellow. Um, the absolute value of 3, 1, 2, 3. Again, what is the distance between 0 and 3? Also 3. You know, and here we're not saying, we're saying for absolute value that right and left, there's no difference. We're just counting how far apart these things are, the negative 3 and the 0. They're 3 apart. In practice, absolute value, you, you could just, uh, one way to think of it is you just get rid of the negative sign if there's a negative sign. Practically, that's, that's what you will do, and that's not wrong. Um, but it could be a bit naive, perhaps. Um, but generally, in, in this class, especially if you're just in pre-algebra or algebra, when you see an, an absolute value sign, really all you're going to do is take away the negative if there's a negative there. Um, it gets trickier um, in more advanced math classes, but in pre-algebra or algebra, you're really not going to see anything tricky for a while, at least. All right. Um, so, see, uh, well, we've already established what the value of neg the absolute value of negative three is. That's three. But this negative in front, um, this is kind of like orders of operation. You could think of the absolute value as having parentheses around it. So we evaluate that first. The absolute value of negative three comes down as a three. And the negative, this is kind of like multiplication. If we see a negative, I'm going to rewrite this in kind of a longer way so it makes more sense. If you just see a negative in front of something, that's the same as a negative 1. And if you see uh, something in parentheses in absolute value, that you treat that like parentheses. So I'm going to do this out kind of a long way. So this is rewriting part C um, in a different way. It is negative 1 times the quantity in parentheses, absolute value of negative 3. So our orders of operation are to first do what's in parentheses. That negative 3 absolute value becomes a 3. And then we have negative 1 times 3, because that negative 1 just came over. And now we uh, perform the next operation according to rules orders of operation, which is we multiply the two numbers, a negative 1 times a 3. And a negative times a positive is a negative. This is going to be negative 3. That's the answer to part C. D, um, absolute value of 0. Well, what is the how far from 0 is 0? Well, you're already there. Uh, there's no distance between 0 and 0. So absolute value of 0 is 0. Moving on. And do, do, do. 
All right. This next part is going to be pretty quick. You'll be happy to know. All right. Um, some of these uh, little little instructions here are, are these hints are very helpful. Use parentheses to separate numbers with negative signs. Yes, please do that. That's going to make your life easy. When two signs are given together, use these rules to resolve the signs. A negative and a negative. This is multiplication here. Two. These are parentheses. Um, that means positive. If you have a negative and a positive, it's going to result to be negative. Positive and a negative. That's negative. And here again, we're talking about multiplication. If I, have, if I have two pluses, if I ever see two pluses in a row, that's plus. So um, this is going to kind of make sense. One way to think of the, the two negatives is if you have a minus, a minus, you can kind of turn that into a big plus. That's kind of what I do. Um, so two plus neg three plus negative two. Well, if we follow this rule, a plus and a negative together, that's the same as subtraction. So this is 3 minus 2 equals 1. Um, and that's one way to do it. Um, in terms of the number line, I'm going to draw a little number line here. Because I don't know if this is really, I don't think this is really the best way to do it. It's, it might be helpful. It's not wrong. It's perfectly fine. Um, I think at some point you will think about it this way though, that if I have the number, here's one, here's two, here's three on the number line, and so I think of that as I'm, I'm here at three, and I'm adding a negative two. That means I'm adding something that moves me two to the left. So I'm starting at three, and then I'm adding a thing that's going to move me two to the left on the number line so it'll take me from three to two to one and notice that's the same answer um, one but um, I skipped this step that doesn't mean you should um, that's going to be up to you that's your, your choice it's probably a good good to be able to do this um, and I'm certainly able to do that and sometimes I will do this simplification but sometimes I will just think of it this way um, and there's no right or wrong way to do that it's just how how we think about the numbers uh, in our head so negative 3 plus 2 um, here the number line is useful we are starting again um, here with a negative 3 and we're adding 2 to it so we go from negative 3 to negative 2 to negative 1 we went over by 2 so here we are at negative 1 um, negative 3 minus a negative 2. Um, that's where some of these rules can be helpful. If you see two negatives in a row, that means that it's going to turn into a positive. That's the same as negative 3 plus 2. And that's like, well, we're on a number line. We're starting at negative 3. It's actually the same. These, these problems are equivalent. So our answers are going to be negative 1. Um, yeah, that's all I'll say about that for now. Uh, part D, negative 3 plus a negative 2. Um, I could simplify it as negative 3 minus 2 would be negative 5. Or I could imagine a number line and say, well, I'm starting um, at negative 3. And then I'm adding something that's going to move me two more to the left. So I go from negative 3. I move over down left to the 1 to negative 4. I move left again, again to get to negative 5. It gives me the same answer, negative 5. So either way is, is, is fine. Um, some of these multiply and divide. Uh, this is actually much simpler um, than example 2. Here we just follow the rules. If we have a, a negative times a negative, that's positive. So this is going to become positive uh, 35. If I, oh, no, positive 30. Um, if I have a positive times a negative, that's going to be a negative. And we can talk about, um, I'm not going to talk about the negative as a reflection uh, yet, because in pre-algebra that might be a little overwhelming, maybe. Anyway, um, if you want to talk about 
negative as a reflection over the uh, number line. Ask me about it. I'd love to talk about it. And again here, this is going to be a negative number because it's a negative, like divided by a positive. So in, in fractions, it's kind of nice just, just to take that negative and move it to the outside. This should be the same as negative 24 over 8. Um, and can we simplify that? Sure. Uh, 8, 16, 24, the same as negative 3. But uh, good practice. Move the negative outside first. Um, here again, um, I'm just going to... I can look at this and I know this is a positive and negative, so I'm just gonna, I know the answer is going to be negative, so I'm just going to throw the negative out first and then actually look at the numbers. Um, this is going to be the 2 times the 1 is a 2. The 3 times the 5 is 15. Um, so it's negative 2 fifteenths, and I can't simplify that. So, yeah, um, it takes some, some, maybe that's a leap, maybe not, but if you see a negative and a positive and you know that they're being multiplied together, um, it's going to become a negative. So I can just throw my negative out in front and then not look at, worry about any negative signs. Just, just know that it will be negative and then I worry about the numbers separate. And that's more helpful if we had something like, I'm going to do a little thing here in this box. If I had something like silly, like say negative three times five times, and you know, we have lots of lots of negatives. Um, I'm first just going to count up all the negatives. So if I have a negative times a negative, that's a positive. If I have a positive times a negative, that's a negative. So I know this is going to be negative, and then I'll worry about the numbers. 3 times 5 is 15. 15 times 4, that's 60. So this would be negative 60. So I like to resolve or think about my signs first and then the numbers. Um, and I think that's a good way to do it. All right, and I think we're done now. Yep. Um, there's some more here. Oh, there's one more thing we have to talk about. And these are these getting a little tricky. And then we'll be done. So um, exponents and negatives. First, um, I'm going to, you know, the square, that means we are multiplying this by itself twice. So this becomes negative 5 times negative 5. And if we have a negative times a negative, that's going to be a positive number. So it's going to be a positive. And 5 times 5 is 25. Um, here, we have a negative 5 cubed. The 3 is the exponent. That means we are multiplying negative 5 by itself three times. So negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5. And now we do our orders of operation with multiplication. Um, and again, we, we could say a few ways to do this. I will do it the, the proper PEMDAS way, um, which is multiplication left to right. Um, the negative 5 times the negative 5 will be a positive 25. And we still have the negative 5 left. The 25 times the negative 5, well, positive times the negative will be a negative. And 25 times 5 is uh, 125. So that's our answer. Now, um, here, this is a, a thing that is gets people confused all the time, um, is when you see an exponent, you know, what are you, what is it really affecting? Is it affecting the 5 or the, the negative 2? And really, it's only going to affect the thing that it's directly above. And parentheses will tell us that this 2 is above the negative 5, the negative and the 5 together. In this case, there's no parentheses, so that negative is, is, has nothing to do with the 5. Think of them as, as separate things. So we have a negative sign that has nothing to do with the 5, really. And then we have a 5 times itself. We have two 5s being multiplied. Same thing here. There's no parentheses, so we have a 5 times a 5 times a 5. And it's just a negative in front. It has nothing to do with, with the 5s. Um, and now I will evaluate these. So 5 times 5 is 25, but that negative is still there. This is negative 25. Okay, um, and here, 5 times 5 times 5, well, 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 5 is 125, and there's a negative in front. 
Um, what makes this confusion reinforcing is the fact that notice for these two, I got the same answer. So even if I didn't know what I would, even if I made a mistake and, and didn't think about it the right way, I would get the same answer and then maybe I mistakenly think I really understand it. Um, and notice for this one, you get different answers. And as a general rule, I mean, if this is an even number, this will produce different answers. If it's an odd number, it'll produce the same answer. But um, it's important that you recognize that this is the exponent and the negative is just kind of there. It's out in front, you can ignore it um, and then put it back at the end. In this case, you can't ignore it. It's this, this whole thing is being cubed. This is negative five cubed. Whereas this is negative five cubed. Um, and I hope that makes sense. All right, so I'm done now talking about all those things. And um, you just skipped around a bit, that's fine. And I would love you to do these practice problems. because they will uh, give me a good idea. Um, application problems, if you want to take a stab at them, that's great. But um, that's going to take a bit more time. Um, I don't want to get into the board problem thing yet because there's actually a lot to that. But if you really understand uh, everything in this first thing, this should be um, none of these should be particularly tricky. You do know everything to do them, um, but if you are confused for them, there's a lot of good reasons for that, and that's going to be a topic of discussion this week. So even if you're in Algebra 2 or in um, Pre-Calc or what it may be, uh, try to do these, and if it's not really easy that means we have some things to talk about to make it easy because either again and uh, if you're not sure what any of these words mean circle it and then don't do the problem you know if you don't know what something means that means the problem is impossible to do so either you find out what it means on your own either by looking it up um, or you ask a teacher or so Alex or John and be perfectly competent to do that or ask someone who knows how to do it. Um, you guys are good resources for each other, resources for each other. Um, but we are going to have to have a, a discussion of units um, and adding like things and non-like things. And, and that is something that usually is not taught in math. It's usually taught in chemistry. So, which is strange um, that it's not taught in math, but yet here it is. There's a bunch of units here we're talking about dollars, we're talking about months, we're talking about years, those are things. Um, so we need to talk about what we do with things. So if you know what to do with things, then try to do these problems. If you don't know what to do with things, and you're not sure what to do, then um, I'm going to encourage you not to do them, uh, because then you might just get yourself frustrated, and I don't want that, and you don't want that, and it's not help not too helpful. But it might be helpful to read it and see, you know, do I know how to do it? You know, and, and answer honestly, and it's okay if that answer is no. That's why you're in school. You are in school because you don't know how to do everything yet. All right, um, that'll be it. Thanks for your patience.